Individuals, businesses, investors, and politicians are concerned about inflation. For the last 18 months, inflation has been a major concern and topic of discussion. This video will cover a hierarchy of different investing categories and how they rank during inflationary periods. Warren Buffett, who is 91 years old, knows a thing or two about inflation because he has lived through it. Cash is the worst investment to make during an inflationary period. Warren Buffett isn't the only investor who dislikes holding cash during an inflationary period. Ray Dalio, another billionaire, has also been vocal about his dislike of cash using the memorable and somewhat catchy phrase, cash is trash. This is because during times of inflation, the money you have sitting in a savings account or your dresser dorm at home is becoming less and less valuable by the day, week, month, and year. One of the most important takeaways I want you to have from this video is that you, as an investor, need to consider your investment returns in real terms. The math behind calculating your real return on investments is straightforward. Assume your investment's return is 10% per year. It is entirely dependent on the rate of inflation. To calculate the real return on your investments, you must deduct the impact of inflation. So if inflation is 7% and your investments return 10% that year, your real return is only 3%. Not nearly as exciting, right? This is why cash is at the bottom of this hierarchy. Your return on holding cash is essentially zero. This is because holding cash for an extended period allows inflationary forces to work against you. Fixed interest rate bonds are positioned above cash in the hierarchy. Conventional investing wisdom regards these investments as highly safe. On the other hand, Buffett would argue that when inflation is factored in, these investments aren't all that safe. As of the production of this video, the current yield on a 10-year US government bond was around 1.8. If you were to purchase a 10-year government bond today, you would effectively lock in a 1.8 annual yearly return for the next decade. Let's say inflation averages 4% over the next decade, which isn't a stretch given that the most recent inflation report showed inflation at 7%. With 4% inflation, you would have a negative 2.2 annual real return after accounting for the impact of inflation on your return. This is still preferable to simply holding cash, but it is far from ideal. If we dropped a million dollars into every household in the United States today, everyone would be pleased except those who invested in things denominated in dollars. It's important to note that people who own fixed rate debt, such as government bonds, suffer losses during periods of inflation. On the other hand, people who borrow money in a long-term structure at a fixed rate benefit from inflation. People who use a mortgage to purchase a home are this example. If you own a home with a large mortgage and have incredible inflation that wipes out the mortgage, you still own the home. Following that are what Buffett refers to as unproductive assets, which include gold, silver, and other precious metals. Now, these aren't terrible to own during an inflationary period because all else being equal, as the price of everything else rises, these things should, in theory, keep up with inflation. However, these unproductive assets are unlikely to increase your purchasing power. Let's move on to the next investment category in our inflation hierarchy. Now, these investors want investments that can outperform inflation and generate a real return, not just keep up with inflation. This is where Warren Buffett's concept of productive assets comes into play. We all know that Warren Buffett made his fortune by purchasing stocks and entire companies. However, Buffett believes that not all businesses are created equal. The average business's productive assets are next in the inflation hierarchy. Average businesses have a few characteristics. They require a lot of additional capital, which is just a fancy word for cash to keep running. Unfortunately, most businesses will suffer in real terms due to inflation. Their earnings may rise gradually, but they are compelled to pour more and more money into the business to stay in the same place. And you know, the worst kind of business is one that makes you put more money on the table all the time and doesn't give you greater earnings. Here's a condensed illustration that hopefully demonstrates the point of using a real business. The largest equipment rental company in the world is United Rentals, ticker symbol URI. 
Their business strategy is fairly straightforward. United Rentals purchase equipment typically used in construction. Projects involving heavy duty trucks, portable restrooms, and bulldozers. United Rentals then goes around and rents out that equipment for a brief period of time, typically for the duration of the project to construction projects. It goes without saying that the company's customers must periodically replace the equipment that it rents to them because it does not last indefinitely. For the sake of simplicity, assume that each bulldozer the company purchases costs $1 million to buy and that over the course of its lifetime, it can be rented out to customers and bring in $1.2 million in revenue for the business. That's a nice $200,000 profit. But let's assume for the purpose of this example that inflation is 20%. As a result, the business will need to spend $1.2 million the next time it needs to replace an existing bulldozer. See what's going on? In this case, the company is not permitted to take any profits from the business. The entire profit that United Rentals generates must be reinvested into the company in order to buy new machinery to replace outdated equipment. Fortunately, I don't anticipate inflation to be anywhere close to 20%, and United Rentals is a great business. However, this illustration highlights capital-intensive businesses' difficulty when inflation is high. Before we move on to the next trait of companies that you should avoid in an inflationary environment, let's briefly discuss a quote by Charlie Munger, a friend and partner of Warren Buffett. There are two types of good companies, those with surplus cash at the end of the year and companies with the entire reported profit. The business will function just as well without the cash as it would have if it had remained in the business, even if you take it out. The second company reports a profit but never has any cash on hand. There are a lot of companies like that where it's best to keep doing what you're doing because there's never any money. Businesses that lack what is known as pricing power are the next type of average business that you should stay clear of. The best way to explain what I mean when I say that some businesses lack pricing power is to discuss one that does briefly. Apple stands out among the brands when we discuss pricing power. Many of Apple's devoted customers are willing to pay whatever the company wants to charge for its iPhone product. If someone wants a new iPhone, they won't purchase a product from a rival just because it's less expensive. Compare this to a company with little to no pricing power, where the customer primarily considers the price. For example, consider a business that produces plain white t-shirts. The business only produces plain white t-shirts. No design or branding are on them because someone will undoubtedly purchase the cheapest white t-shirt they can find. This business has no pricing power because people will choose to purchase the white t-shirts of this company's rivals if prices are higher than those of this t-shirt manufacturer's competitors. It is also impossible for it to raise prices higher than those of its rivals. For this company, an inflationary environment will be challenging. The price of the raw materials used to make the shirts is rising. As a result, paying workers to make the shirts are getting more expensive. Additionally, it is getting more expensive to ship the shirts to customers. The cost the business can charge for the shirts is the only thing that isn't really rising. Do you now understand why inflation presents such a problem for businesses without pricing power? Let's now move on to the next hierarchy level investment category. Let's refer to these investments as successful businesses and productive assets. Here is another illustration for you. In the previous example, do you recall the business that spent $1 million on a bulldozer? Let's say instead that our friend John here uses that same 1 million to create software that, for example, makes it simpler for YouTube creators to create videos. Let's assume that John makes 1.2 million from that product on his first year, just like in the previous example. A $200,000 gain, excellent, but hold it, it gets better. Let's assume that there is a 20% inflation in this illustration. John can therefore charge 20% more for his software this year than he could last year. 
As a result of the 20% inflation, John's sales from the previous year, which totaled $1.2 million, now totals $1.44 million. But the great thing about this software company is that John doesn't need to keep putting money back into it. He already has the software, so any money he might have to spend on maintaining and updating it would be extremely small. This is the opposite of a capital intensive business in the earlier example. John's software company would be what is referred to as a capital light business because there isn't much money that needs to be invested in it in order to keep it operating and producing its product. This indicates that unlike the earlier example of the equipment rental company where John had to continually reinvest his profits into maintaining the business, John could take his profits out of the company. The opposite of the mediocre business we discussed earlier is what you want to look for in a company that does well during inflation. You're looking for a company with low costs. These companies can expand without having to reinvest sizable sums of money continually. These are frequently companies with powerful brands or corporations like Apple, Coca-Cola, or Buffett's own C's candies. Businesses that don't depend on owning a significant amount of physical assets, such as factories or physical inventory, are other examples of businesses with low capital requirements. So consider organizations like Microsoft, Facebook, or other tech-related businesses. Pretty much any software company falls into this category because compared to most businesses, the amount of money invested back into the company after the software is developed and costs money to build it is minimal. Pricing power is the other essential component of a business you want to own in an inflationary environment. I'll be the first one to admit that determining a company's pricing power requires more art than science, but there are some things to consider that may be of use. For example, consider how a customer would respond if a company increased its prices by 10% as one exercise, in my opinion. Customers may react in various ways with responses ranging from no way am I paying that to I don't care about the price increase, take my money please. So you want to invest in companies whose stock prices can be easily increased during periods of inflation when prices are rising. Avoid investing in customized industry businesses that find it difficult to raise prices even in normal times. This video will come to a close with some wise words from Warren Buffett. The best investment is made if you are the top brain surgeon, attorney, or whatever else in your field. To be that, in modern terms, you don't need to keep learning new things. You did not have to keep reinvesting because you already paid for your expertise when you attended medical, law, or other academic institutions. You keep your ability to earn money today. The best defense against inflation is self-investment. Whether you are the best mechanic, attorney, dentist, plumber, or accountant, you make yourself incredibly valuable to others if you are the best at what you do. The advantage of being highly valued in a marketplace economy is that you can charge whatever you want for your services and your customers will gladly pay you for it.